Bungie has been going insane with all the different archetypes of weapons they have brought to us. We're going into the fourth week of this expansion and we're still making weapon reviews. And that's because some of these are truly unique. They're not just like, hey, here's a new weapon that shoots at a different rate of fire with a different impact amount. We're getting heavy waveframe swords. We've got Ergo Sum, which can literally roll with exotic traits from other weapons. And now we have a new archetype of auto rifle. This one is called No Hesitation. It's a 600 round per minute an auto rifle that was dubbed by Bungie as the don't die gun. It's a brand new support frame archetype. Now I know some of you are like cross. I don't play support. I'm a destiny player. I shoot the bad guys. And if I could, I would literally shoot the blueberry next to me, but Bungie won't let me. Well, with no hesitation, you can in fact shoot your fellow blueberries, except you won't be killing them. You'll be healing them and pretty fast. Looking at the description of this support frame archetype though, it reads flexible and agile, capable of healing allies and hurting foes. Harming targets targets builds a restorative charge. Hip firing at allies while this weapon is charged heals them with rapid healing, increasing weapon damage and bestowing restoration to your allies. Now, I know that's a lot. You want to know why Bungie got rid of legendary shards? It's so they could fit this long, hellacious weapon frame description into no hesitation. But I want to focus on that first part. Harming targets builds a restorative charge. And you can see it right here in the gameplay. The reticle for this weapon looks almost identical to how a reticle looks while using a glaive. And this energy bar will charge based on the amount of damage you do to enemies. And this does change depending on the tier of enemy that you are shooting. Now, if you take a look here at Carl, it was taking 19 body shots to fully charge our healing energy. But if we only go for crits, it takes less, just 13 shots. Now, the same thing applies to red bar enemies, but here instead, it takes only 10 body shots and eight crits to get a full charge. Now, an important thing to note is that any damage charges are healing energy. If you look here, we're starting at zero, but with a single sword heavy swing on Carl, this gets us back to full energy. So as long as you are clearing ads as you would normally, you will have constant healing for your allies. Now, speaking of, taking a look at the second part of it, it states that hip firing at allies while this weapon is charged heals them with rapid healing and increasing weapon damage and bestowing restoration to your allies. Now you can see it here. There will be a small triangle when an ally is in range to be healed. So long as you are hip firing at that ally, they will be receiving healing. Now the range on this guys is substantial. We found the drop off to be 31 meters before the triangle will disappear. And another thing to note is that the healing bullets track and aggressively track. So long as they are within your range, you can pretty much ensure they will get continuous healing. And then when healing allies, you'll see above displayed on the left of your screen called support frame bonus. This grants you and your allies a 10% increase to your damage. It's not just the don't die gun. It's the don't die, kill everything gun. You can see here at Carl, we first hit 1,518 damage, but after being healed and with the buff active, our damage goes up to 1,670. So at a glance, this is very similar to something like Lumina. Granted, it's not as lethal as Lumina, as Lumina is a 35% increase in damage, but Lumina is a legendary. But we do have some traits on this weapon that can kind of get it close to that, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Where things do differ though and get crazy is when we talk how it stacks with Radiant and other empowering buffs like Lumina does. Us. Uniquely to this buff, it stacks with everything. This is an incredibly rare interaction reserved to things like Transcendence and the Titan exclusive Glaive. We can see it at work here on Carl as when we proc Radiance with our melee, plus the support frame boost and circle of life, which gives us a 25% boost. We'll talk about that in just a second. Our damage though goes up to 2,620. Guys, this is a 73% increase over base. This interaction may not seem like it's that important, but this could have big implications for stacking buffs in the future. Now, one other thing to keep in mind is that you don't need to literally heal your allies to get this buff. Even if they are at full health, you will still both receive the damage increase. Now, with all the frame talk out of the way let's get into the perks guys this gun is loaded with a bunch of very good perks starting in column three we have physic subsistence ensemble grave robber demolitions overflow and strategist now in column four we have incandescent attrition orbs frenzy disruption break circle of life which is a new perk, desperate measures and surroundings now i want to first take a look at the new perks that are specific to this weapon we're going to start with physic this reads that rapidly healing allies grants restoration to you and 
and your allies. Now, this, of course, synergizes perfectly with this weapon, considering the weapon intrinsically heals allies. This is adding an extra layer of survivability to not only your allies here, but also to yourself, which is important. Rule number one in any dungeon is don't let the healer die. And since you can directly heal yourself with this gun, this is really the perfect perk to help you stay alive longer while also still boosting up your team. Now, taking a look at this perk in action, we see here each time you heal an ally, Physic will proc after only a couple of shots. This will grant you and your allies restoration times one, which lasts for five seconds. Now, of course, this timer can be infinitely refreshed so long as you have the energy for it. Now, there is an enhanced version of this because, of course, this is a craftable weapon, and this will instead grant restoration times two for five seconds rather than restoration times one to both you and your allies. Now, listen, I don't know if this is intentional or not. Normally, the enhanced versions are just slime bumps. This is a pretty big bump, and nowhere does it state explicitly that you would receive restoration times two from the enhanced version of this perk. And as you know, enhanced versions of perks are normally like, hey, a little more time. You go from five seconds to maybe six seconds. But this, restoration times one to times two? Holy hell. Times one is 35 HP per second. Times two is 50 HP per second. This is a very strong perk, and really it should be. It was made for this gun specifically. But now taking a look at our fourth column perk that is also new, this one being called Circle of Life. It reads that rapidly healing allies grants this weapon a period of increased damage. Do talk about synergy on synergy, hot damn it. At this point, it's an exotic. You can see here while healing an ally though, the perk circle of life will proc. This lasts for 10 seconds and it grants no hesitation here, a 25% increase to its damage. And the enhanced version extends the buff timer to 11 seconds rather than 10. So just for using the gun, as intended, you get free damage for your weapon. And this also stacks with the 10% damage buff that we're receiving from the support frame. We can see here at Carl, we're hitting for 1,670 damage with just the support frame buff. But if we use Circle of Life, that damage goes up to 2,088 damage. Guys, this is substantial. This is a 37.5% increase in damage over base for simply using the gun as it was intended to be used. Now, while these perks are great, and they really let you lean into the weapon's playstyle, there's still other good options if you're trying to go for a more offensive perk setup. For other perks, in column three, we have subsistence, which will partially refill your magazine from reserves when landing a kill. This refills 10% in the mag, with the enhanced version refilling up to 20%. We also have overflow, which as the name implies, overflows the magazine beyond normal capacity when you pick up a special or heavy ammo brick. And this is up to 100% of your base mag, with the enhanced version overflowing 120% of your base mag. And lastly, we have demolitionists. Always to silent one guys you get grenade ability energy back per kill being roughly 10 percent with the enhanced version giving you 11 percent now in column four we also have some other silent ones. You've got Incandescent, which is always a good one on solar weapons. This spreads 30 Scorch stacks to nearby targets when an enemy is defeated. And with Ember of Ashes, this goes up to 40 Scorch stacks. The enhanced version of this adds five more Scorch stacks when using Ember of Ashes. So this would go from 40 to 45. Now you can also go things like Frenzy for that 15% damage buff. It also boosts handling and reload speed. So it's not as if this weapon is just a support weapon. Although in my opinion, that's 100% the reason why I would use this weapon. As for the origin trait, though. This is found on all of our Pilhar weapons, that being called Dealer's Choice. This reads that final blows of this weapon grant a small amount of super energy. Equipping multiple weapons from the Pilhar increases this effect. Now, the buff in super energy isn't anything to write home about, but it is a nice bonus. Seems to be about 1% when one weapon equipped, two weapons gives you 2.5%, and three weapons is about 4%. You also have artifact mods that synergize with this, tacking on a little bit of AoE damage when landing kills with weapons that have Dealer's Choice. Now, moving on to our God Roll recommendation. If you want to go for that more offensive playstyle, subsistence or overflow with incandescent is a good choice. You can lay on the trigger, especially with subsistence, clear rooms of ads, proc incandescent. You can't go wrong with it. But I feel like if you're using a gun centered around keeping your team alive, you gotta be using physic and circle life. These perks were made for this gun. They have beautiful synergy with one another, with physic adding an extra layer of survivability for your allies and yourself, and then circle of life further boosting your weapon damage, allowing you to deal with higher health enemies on even the toughest difficulties. Now, of course, you don't need to run these perks in tandem. I actually think Physic and Incandescent is also a top tier choice. You kind of get the best of both worlds. Great survivability and amazing ad clear from Incandescent. So you have options. Now, I also want to quickly go over the different fragments and exotic armor that you can utilize to get the most out of no hesitation. First up, we have the new Warlock Exotic Speaker Sight. It comes with the perk, The Lost Voice, which reads, Healing grenades spawn a restorative turret. Healing allies occasionally 
occasionally spawns in orb of power. And when we first saw this exotic, nobody truly knew just how strong this was going to be. Let me tell you guys, it's potent. So much so that we actually made use of it throughout the day one raid. But the main thing we are looking to take advantage of is the second part of that perk. Healing allies occasionally spawns in orb of power. Yes, this can be healing from any source. As you can see here, it works perfectly with no hesitation. Now, when you spawn in orb of power, there's an internal cooldown from when you can generate another, this being about 10 seconds. But if you have the healing turrets paired with no hesitation, it literally rains orbs for your entire team. Now, onto our fragments. First, I want to start with our solar subclass. The big one here being Ember of Benevolence. This will give you increased ability regeneration to your grenade, melee, and class ability after applying Cure, Restoration, or Radiant to your allies. Now, this is a massive 400% increase to ability regeneration for all of your abilities, which lasts for six seconds. And since we're constantly applying restoration to our allies with no hesitation, you can keep this buff up pretty much at all times. You could also use something like Ember of Empyrean, where getting kills with solar weapons extends the duration of Radiant and Restoration. This pair with Physic, which gives us Restoration when healing allies with no hesitation, allows us to further extend Restoration's duration up to a maximum of 15 seconds. Now, you can also extend this further by using Ember of Solace to extend the duration of the initial proc of Restoration that we apply to ourselves. And then moving on to our Prismatic subclass, the only one worth mentioning here is really Facet of Sacrifice. This grants us bonus Dark transcendence energy while you have an arc solar or void buff and again restoration is a solar buff so you get the idea now to conclude this video i want to briefly look at how this gun performs inside of pvp to preface this i want to mention again that this gun is not hit scan similar to something like osseo struga this gun shoots projectiles that tracks to targets but unlike osseo the tracking inside of pvp seems very inconsistent in pve tracking isn't much of an issue inside of pvp though it's pretty rough now the healing and perks function pretty much identical you can see here at base we're dealing 30 damage to the head and 19 damage to the body then with the support frame boost active our head shot damage goes up to 33 and our body shot damage goes up to 21 then lastly with the support frame boost plus circle of life our damage goes up to 38 damage per head and 24 damage per body now listen if you want to use this inside of pvp go right ahead personally i don't really see this being a play i would rather just use like summoner or something like that right now maybe if you got like a super blueberry on your team that slays out perhaps you can run around and heal them but i wouldn't recommend it overall guys no hesitation is an s tier weapon will people use it probably not because nobody Nobody wants to play support but guys this is a weapon that i'm going to be sprinkling into my builds and loadouts for a number of reasons the synergies that it has with certain fragments and builds the ability to proc restoration even for myself and my allies while also gaining a damage buff it's a shame that more people aren't going to try to use this weapon they see support and they immediately think no that ain't me but for me and my fire team no hesitation will always have a place fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right Oh,